Hello everyone, showing my Prime Days purchase of an Asus VivoBook 15. This is an Intel mobile 12th generation Core i3, and it has two performance cores and four efficiency cores for a total of six cores and eight threads. It comes with 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD and eight gigabytes of RAM. We do plan to do an upgrade on this immediately before we even hook it up to the internet or even turn it on. Let's see what lies inside. What did Asus send us today? I'm not expecting a heck of a lot in the box, in the packaging. Not for the price we paid, which is this much. All right, we take it out. We have some cardboard. And we have something on the side. And we have what looks like our actual laptop. On the side, we have a very small barrel jack power adapter. And how many watts is this? It says 45 watts on it. Not a heck of a lot of power draw. I wouldn't expect that in a mobile Core i3. And what have we got on the computer side? Let's get that out of there. And we've got, well, let's take a look. We've got some paperwork. Uh, Asus user's guide, warranty card, and looks like a quick, looks like a warning, a quick user card. All right, getting that out of the way. Let's take a look at the computer itself. So it isn't some soft packaging. Not bad, good looking. A little bit heavy, it's not exactly lightweight. The back has got a nice texture to it. It's all plastic. It's definitely all plastic. Opening it up, we have another pad and we have our laptop itself. Core i3, some Asus stickers, antimicrobial guard. So this will inhibit 99% of COVID-19, flu virus and bacteria, how nice. One of the reasons I picked this out, a price aside and the fact that it is a 12th gen Core i3, is it has a separate keypad, which I thought was nice. And it's a 15 inch screen and it does have a webcam and there is a privacy shield on that webcam. Port-wise, we have a headphone microphone jack, looks like a combo port. We have USB-C. We have two Type-C USB 3s, or excuse me, Type-A USB 3s, one Type-C. We have a full-size HDMI. We have the power. And we have one USB 2.0 and we have activity lights. We don't have anything like a memory card slot or anything like that. We don't have ethernet on the computer itself. And the next thing I wanna do is I want to open the back of this and we're going to immediately replace the NVMe SSD with a one gigabyte SSD, excuse me, a one terabyte SSD that we purchased also on the Amazon Prime. And in order to do that, we're going to take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws of varying lengths. All right. When you take the screws out of a laptop like this or any laptop bottom, 
you want to set them aside in a pattern such that you can put them back the way they came on. You do not want to put a long screw in a short hole, especially on a plastic chassis. Any chassis, really. Let's get this thing open and uh, let's replace that SSD. Let's remove some screws. And like we talked about, keeping the screws on the magnetic pad in the same pattern. What we want to do next is try and pry the chassis open gently. A few moments later. The one thing I have to say is these do come apart, but they are frightfully scary to get apart. A lot of crackles and crinkles. I think the important thing to be careful of is there is a curve around right here on the back. You don't want to lift too hard or too fast and break that. And there we go. There's the back of our laptop. And right here, we have our extra RAM slot. So it looks like the other, the eight gigs is either soldered on the motherboard or it's on the flip side in a RAM slot. My guess is it's probably soldered on. We have that. We have our Wi-Fi module, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. And then we have the 128 gig NVMe that came with it. And let's get our NVMe out. And this is the 128 gig that came with the computer. And so I don't lose it, I'm going to put that screw right back in. There we are. It's got some tape on it. I'm not going to bother it. Let's get the replacement drive in. And then let's talk about Windows 11 and activation. Before we put the drive in, since we have the chassis open, we might as well talk about what's inside one of these. Again, we have the uh, SODIMM for our 8 gig module we're going to put in there. We have the 12th gen CPU which is soldered onto the motherboard. We do have our heat pipe going to our fan assembly. We have the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module with the antenna connectors. Something interesting, I didn't notice it until now. You can see how the connector for the NVMe drive is at an angle on the motherboard because they had to fit it between the battery and the fan. So they actually did some modification there when they put this together. It, uh, it sits sort of jauntily at a bit of an angle. 
That's kind of nice engineering there. Yeah, well, it's interesting engineering. Somebody tell me if they think that's nice or not. Again, we have our connectors on either side. And we have our battery, our lithium ion battery. And we have our speakers on either side. Speaker and speaker. And those are connected by wires. And I'm not going to poke around anymore in here. That's the inside of our chassis. That's the motherboard. Next step is to receive in today's UPS drop that replacement one gig Samsung NVMe drive. And the game plan with this is the Asus would have come with Windows 11. It's Home S, but we can upgrade it, you know, to Home. Um, it would have had it on this. And there's no serial number that comes with the computer. More likely than not, the Windows 11 install in this system is tied to the hardware configuration and registered with Microsoft. What we should be able to do is replace this drive with a blank one gig, one terabyte, I keep saying one gig, one terabyte NVMe, Samsung NVMe drive, replace it outright, and then boot this computer from a Windows 11 install USB drive, install Windows 11, and we should be able to activate that Windows 11 based on this hardware configuration, the motherboard and the CPU configuration that should already be registered with a Microsoft product serial ID number, which does come with this computer, and just go ahead and have full-blown Windows 11. That should work. We're going to find out. That's one of the great mysteries right now. And ta-da! Just this afternoon, we have a Samsung 980 Pro, one terabyte NVMe drive that we're going to put in our VivoBook. I didn't know when it was going to show, but I'm so happy. We'll have to remove the screw that we left in there. Hold on to that. Fits like a glove. All right, we are still waiting on that sodium, but we're gonna try and do the Windows 11 install from scratch. We'll start up and we'll go right into the BIOS with an F2. All right. We are in the BIOS. We've got our 12th Gen Core i3. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Oh, ha, huh. why not use the mouse? All right, there's our CPU. It's got the built-in Intel graphics. Fan will start up when it needs to. All right, we show our one terabyte SSD. And let's talk about Booting. All right. Boot option one. There's our sand disk, and that has our Windows 11. And are we going to want a boot option two? Well, that's the only drive that's formatted. And let's go ahead and let's accept that. Let's save and reset. 
And yes. Clean install. Now on these Asus laptops with the Intel chips and chipsets, sometimes it refuses to see a new SSD. And in that case, we have to go to Asus support and download the IRST driver tool. IRST driver tool from Asus support. Then we want to load those as drivers. And let's go ahead and browse. And we have those on our USB drive right here. There we go. And we want to select the first one. And this should allow Windows 11 on this laptop with the Intel CPU and chipset to see our new SSD. Without that, we could not see this SSD. And finally, we have Windows Home installed and it automatically activated with the digital license because of Asus pre-setting everything with Microsoft. So this motherboard and CPU combo were registered with Microsoft and we were able to just go ahead and format a brand new NVMe SSD, put Windows 11 Home on it from scratch, and it automatically activated with the digital license. Exactly what we hoped for. Hope that takes care of any confusion anyone might have on how to go ahead and do this. Again, I would say the trickiest part was getting the Windows 11 install media to recognize this SSD on this Asus laptop. If you have any questions, uh, send them in the comments. And thanks for watching.